So the third thing you're going to do when you're working through planning a pilot is to list your constraints, resources, and activities. So your resources are, how many people do you need to do this? Um, what would your budget be? And this is a space, I think, listing the things that if there are skills that you don't have or services that you can't do yourself, making a list of those um, and then getting some prices online or calling and asking a couple of people, what would it cost to print 100 posters or um, how much would it cost to get two to three hours of graphic design time? Is that enough time to create a poster? Um, calling around and getting those estimates so that you have that information. Um, like I said, we can uh, provide grants for these projects and we hope many of you will apply for grants. Um, but just listing the things that you think you'll need to get that done. It's also important to think of, are there taxes that you should be including? Um, are there other fees or things that you haven't expected? Um, other resources are, are there tools you can use? And I think this is a really um, relevant one for many of the projects people have proposed here. Are there tools on Wiki that can help you identify um, articles that are very popular? Um, are there tools off Wiki, such as Google Trends, that can help you find out what is popular and interesting to people? Um, on, I think another on Wiki tool could be, are there tools that can help you find gaps in content that you want to fill? Um, you know, Satdeep has shared a project in the past that he did where they created content on Punjabi literature because that was something that was missing on Punjabi Wikipedia um, and was very hard to find online. So I know that there are tools for finding content gaps. Um, and I think on the Wikipedia Wikimedia Resource Center, you should be able to dig a little bit deeper and, and see if there are tools or people who can help you solve some of those problems. So with constraints, what you're thinking about here is, do you have a deadline? Is there some kind of limit to the resource? Um, and are there cultural behaviors that would prevent or inhibit this work? Um, so in terms of deadline with these pilots, um, I'd like to recommend that people plan a pilot that they can test in the next six months so that they can get started quickly. So I would suggest, um, if you get a grant in this round um, to plan a project that goes from March until June. March is when you would receive the funding, though you could start work ahead of time on things that don't need funding. Um, so is this something that you can do in six months? Um, and if your project doesn't seem like it can be done in six months, is there some part you can do in six months? So limitations to resources. The funding that's available is up to 2,000 US dollars. So you probably can't make a two minute video or commercial uh, or something like that. And you probably can't print QR codes in textbooks across your country. Thinking about what your resources are and what you can do with those resources is really important. Um, and then the third one, are there cultural behaviors that will prevent or inhibit this work? Um, a cultural behavior you might think about is, do students use QR codes? Does anyone use QR codes? Do you have evidence that QR codes are something that is working in the city or town where you live? Ways you could check that is to see, you know, what the downloads are like for QR code readers. Um, you could look for other QR code projects and see, like, are lots of people doing this? Um, if you've seen them at a cultural institution, asking the, um, the staff at that institution, so like, how has this project gone for you? Are people using this? Um, are there other, I'm wondering if Maria Sat or Satip can offer suggestions of other sorts of cultural behaviors that might prevent people from doing something on a project. Well, um, I was thinking that um, the example that I gave before about what is educate, what is the educator or the teacher's attitude towards Wikipedia, right. um, that tends to be a cultural norm. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, so it yeah, it's common that if there's one teacher uh, 
in in one classroom that doesn't believe that uh, we should use Wikipedia, there's probably more within the same school. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be a very clear example of a cultural behavior. Yeah. Um, I've heard in the past with regards to education projects that sometimes it's easier to work with teachers at schools that are not, um, in the US we would call them a private school. I know that in different parts of the world they would call it something else, but this would be a school that's not part of the national education system, probably a school where people pay to attend um, because those schools may have more flexibility about what they can teach and what they can do with students. That's a recommendation that I've heard before with education. So if you're planning something that involves students, um, it, it would be important to ask around, you know, is this something that you can change? Is this something that you feel open to trying? Do most teachers feel open to this? Um, I think another way of thinking of cultural behaviors that might prevent or inhibit this, if we go to did you know posters at a university, things that might make this project hard isn't as much a cultural behavior, but it's school holidays. Um, is your project going to fall during a time when there's a holiday when not many people are on campus? Um, is it going to do, be during a time when there are lots of people going somewhere? Is there a time of the year when there are a whole lot, like many, many more posters that are up or fewer posters? Um, and where do you think the posters are that people spend the most time looking at and reading? I've seen I'll just leave that. Um, so the constraints, I think being realistic about what those are when you're planning your project can help you get more creative about how and when and where you're going to work. Um, and it's a lot more helpful to know what the constraints are before you start your pilot, though you will almost certainly learn of some as you're moving through your pilot. So what we would recommend that you do is make a list of the activities that you need to do as part of the pilot project and create a timeline or task list if you need to. What I would suggest um, for these shorter term projects is making, I would say, start a spreadsheet that just has um, each month broken down into weeks and going through that spreadsheet and that, that little calendar that you're making yourself and start by noting when are there holidays, when are there um, things that might disrupt this project or give people more time to work on something. So have those to start with. And then think of the tasks that you'll need to complete to get towards the final project that you want to do. So the tasks for creating a poster might be choosing five or six articles um, that you think are really interesting and finding facts in those. So your first task might be creating a list of articles. Um, your next task could be Help me out here, Satdeep. Um, well, I don't see him now. Your next task could be also choosing images that are looking good. Um, other tasks could be getting quotes from graphic designers um, for support from their work, getting um, estimates from a printer about the cost of printing, um, getting permission from a school to post something, um, proofreading and finalizing the poster before it goes to print, maybe an afternoon spent putting tape or getting materials together before posting the posters, um, going and putting things up, putting the posters up, um, and just the other activities that you would do um, and other tasks that you need to do to move through your pilot project. Um, and knowing what those are and looking at them on a calendar can really help you decide, okay, is this too many things? Is this still simple enough? Because um, you want to make the pilot project as easy on yourself as possible. Remember we talked earlier about simplicity, um, both for yourself and for the people you work with. 